Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am Paul and this time I'm in Hastings, New Zealand for the annual Wheels on Windsor Car Show organised by the Hawke's Bay British and European Car Club. We'll start with a quick preview of what's coming up. So that was a quick overview of cars at the show. I would take a longer, slower look at everything that was there right after this message. When your classic car cover is coming up for renewal, try our club scheme arranged with Peter James Insurance. It offers great rates and a range of exclusive benefits including free salvage retention and multi-vehicle options. Just click the link in the description below to get a quote. As I arrived at the showground, this lovely sunbeam rapier was just coming into the field. A moment later, I was delighted to see this BMW Isetta on the move. Previously, I'd seen it, but only stationary. Then an Austin, I think an Austin 7 came by, a Capri manoeuvring in the distance, and a Volvo Amazon. I then began making my way clockwise around the field and the first to really catch my eye was this 1988 TVR 350i fitted with the uh, originally from Buick the Rover 3.5 litre engine. Beside the TVR looking stunning under the trees was this 1966 Jaguar E-Type. This is the 4.2. Possibly strange bedfellows, but only a few feet away was this lovely row of Morris Miners including two low lights in the middle there. I always find those more interesting as they're less common. Next up, members of the Hawke's Bay Capri Club with, well, you guessed it, Ford Capris. I know this is subjective, but for me, the most beautiful car at the show, a 1997 Jaguar XK8. Fitted with Jaguar's 4-litre engine, a gorgeous interior and just the most lovely red colour bodywork. Very attractive. Next up, an MG Midget, the little brother of the MGB. This is a 1980 vintage and in fact recorded as being red, so clearly it's had a colour change at some stage. I've included this one as it's a bit of a curiosity. It's a 2000 Honda Insight Hybrid. So it has a 990cc petrol engine married to an electric motor. Unusual styling to say the least. Along from the Honda, a row of little Fiat 500s. What do I need to tell you about these except, well, they're Italian. And also, they had probably the friendliest owners in the Atai's show. Great fun.
One of the Fiat owners offered to show me his special technique for getting into the car. Um, you know, they, they now have seat belts. So what I do is, so you gotta get the seat belt ready first. All right. All right. Ah. And I put it behind me like this. And then I grab here. And I suppose if I was younger and fitter, I wouldn't have to do all this. Yes. And then, so if that's my, that plant there. Yeah. Oh, nice. oh, very good. And there you're good to go. Looking lovely in dark green with black fenders, this 1938 Morris Series E with a one litre engine. I heard a sound behind me and it was none other than my next door neighbour Eric with his lovely Ford Roadster. Quite beautiful. I'm talking about the car, not Eric, of course. Now back with the Brits and this gorgeous blue 1969 Riley Elf. Based of course on the Mini, it has the 998cc A-Series engine. Tucked away in a corner of the field and looking utterly superb, this green Triumph TR2 from 1954. 1800cc engine, twin SU carbs and in great condition. Staying in the 1950s, this is a 1951 Austin Shearline A125. I once had the pleasure of driving one of these that belonged to the late Mr Ian Hope of the British Car Museum in uh, Homoana in Hawke's Bay. Lovely to drive, apart from one thing, it had the uh, column gear change and every time I went for first I trapped, painfully trapped, my finger between the gear change and the windscreen. It sticks in your mind, that kind of thing. But what a lovely interior. Sorry to interrupt the video. But if you're enjoying it, we need your help. All we're asking is for you to take just a second to hit the subscribe button and also do the same with the like button. Thank you. We do appreciate your support. Now, back to the video. Now along this side of the field we have this lovely white MGC, this one's a 1968. And like the vast majority of the cars at the show uh, today, this one is beautifully presented, obviously much loved and well looked after. Credit to the owner. Alongside the MGC, the slightly older uh, MG Midget, this one's a 1962 and again very well presented, uh, beautiful condition. Just look at these gorgeous seats, I love the piping. And 
fresh from the set of Z cars, maybe this lovely 1965 blue Ford Zephyr 6 reminds me of a particularly unpleasant family holiday back in the 1960s. Still a smashing car. This Mark II Zephyr 6 looks great in red and white. This one's a 1962 model. Again, brilliant condition. Tucked in between the Fords, this beautiful Vauxhall Cresta. Interesting to see the very different internal treatment in the Vauxhalls, of course heavily influenced by GM designs in those days. And just behind it, looking gorgeous in this pale green in the sunlight, this Zodiac. This one is a 1964. Continuing along this side of the display field, we have a couple of Mark I Zephyr 6s, both looking really good. Next up from the heyday of the Roots group, this fantastic singer Vogue. They really did have a bit of class about them, just look at the interior there, it's beautiful. They were, of course, more expensive than the competing Fords and Vauxhalls, and presumably that was part of what led to their downfall. Shame. Now here's a car we don't see very often. From 1972, it's Vauxhall's Firenze, with the 1256cc Viva engine. The styling was everything with this one, and once again beautifully presented, clearly a much loved car. And here's one of my favourites at the show, a 1949 Ford Pilot with the V8 engine. It was a 3.6, very stylish car, pretty powerful for its day, and doesn't it look brilliant in this pale green colour, I love it. come across a couple of little vintage Austins. The first with the Reg Violet is a 1935 with a 700 cc engine and then there's an Austin 7 Special from 1932. Quickly followed by the um, replica fire engine Austin 7. Alongside the Austins this lovely silver 1952 Jaguar Mark 7 with the two and a half litre engine. I believe this is one I had a good look at when it was for sale a few years ago. Um, I was scared off by the thought of high repair costs. It's looking pretty good. Parked beside the Mark 7, and even more to my liking, was this 1968 Jaguar 420. It's gorgeous, and take a look at the interior. You can almost smell the leather, can't you? Beautiful. This one's a lovely Alvis TC21-100 from 1953. 
I can't be sure, but it just might be the Elvis that once belonged to Ian Hope at the British Car Museum. If it is that one, uh, I had a short drive in it a few years ago and it was beautiful. Gorgeous three litre engine, really pushes it along the road. For its day, a powerful, luxurious and fast car. Next up, the 1969 Mark II Cortina GT with the 1600cc engine. Here is the BMW Isetta and the Sunbeam Rapier we saw entering the field at the beginning of the video. I do love the Rapier. Beautiful interior like most uh, Roots Group cars from the 1960s and just look at the leather, the piping on the seats. Next is this red Triumph TR6 1974 perfect car for a drive out on a sunny day. What more could you ask for? On the other hand, if you like something with a little age, how about this 1953 MG TD? Looking fantastic, very well cared for, lovely clean engine bay too. I think I'll go for the 53. <laughs> and looking as good as new, this gorgeous 1973 Rover V8 3500. And just when I thought I'd seen all the special cars on the field, I came across this 1961 Daimler SP250, of course often referred to as the Dart. As you can see it was in amazing condition, I was keen to talk to the owner but he was being kept very busy by others. Not as exotic but nevertheless full of charm, 1962 Mark II Triumph Spitfire. Just a little 1147cc engine in this one, but great fun. Ten years or so newer, and for those with deeper pockets, two lovely Triumph Stags. Having completed a circuit of the outer edge of the field, I then turn my attention to a row of beauties parked across the centre, beginning with this Vauxhall Velox. It's a 1963 with a 2.7 litre engine, looking great. Beside it, the little 1966 Vauxhall Viva HA. This one a deluxe. I'm not sure what this had that the non-deluxe model didn't have, but it's looking very neat and tidy. Alongside the Viva is an Austin A110 Westminster. A very nice 1964 Rover 110 from 1964 and a 1973 Morris 1300 automatic, looking very tidy. The Rover was in great condition, so I decided to double back for a closer look. The interior was stunning, as you can see. Just love the steering wheel with the chrome horn ring, and the original upholstery by the look of it hasn't been restored. Very, very nice. Since you're still here, we can only assume you've been enjoying the video, which is great. Uh, please show your appreciation by subscribing, click on the like button 
And why not leave us a comment? We do always respond and it really helps us out. Thanks very much.